If you find yourself traveling by train through the marshlands at the south end of the bay, you might see some ramshackle, dilapidated buildings scattered on either side of the tracks. Once upon a time, this was the town of Drawbridge. One of our listeners wanted to know more. I'd like to know more about Drawbridge, anything about the history and why it was created and when it became a ghost town. Thanks a lot. Today, like John said, Drawbridge is a ghost town, often called the last remaining ghost town in the Bay Area. The story of Drawbridge began in 1876 when a new railroad line was built linking the Bay Area to Santa Cruz. The line took a direct route through the marshes of the South Bay, crossing over a roughly mile-long stretch of land known today as Station Island. As riders passed through, they'd look out and see ducks, thousands of them. It was a duck hunting paradise. So those riders started getting off the train to go shoot them up. Before the 19th century was over, the tiny island began growing into a small town. Basically, there were hunters, you know. And then people got so they liked it down there without hunting. So they come and go all during the year, not just during the duck season. It was a very nice place to be. By the 1920s, Drawbridge had grown to include gun clubs, hotels, and about 80 or 90 homes with both seasonal and full-time residents. At its peak, the small island housed about 600 people. Because of its remote location and the fact that there was no government or law enforcement, the makeshift town developed a reputation for prostitution and gambling. The bar did a good business, and apparently there was uh, entertainment of all sorts. But former residents don't talk about that. Instead, they wax on about idyllic rural living and life in a somewhat strange location on the outskirts of the booming bay. The big excitement was if they had to open the bridge to let a boat go through. Then, also, uh, then everybody came out to see the bridge open, you know, so the big, big deal. Yeah, times have changed. Uh, times have changed. Look yeah. better in the old days. So what happened? Why is the town abandoned? For starters, pollution and sewage from the increasingly industrial South Bay flowed into the marshes, making it nasty for both humans and wildlife. The canneries would dump so much garbage, well, lye water, basically, so it was sulfuric acid in the water that would turn it black, and it would turn your, the paint on the house black, and all of the utensils in the kitchen would turn black. On top of that, in the 1930s, salt manufacturing took over the area. Levees were built, and Drawbridge was surrounded by salt ponds. The once pristine marshlands were no more. To make matters worse, more and more people were tapping the underground aquifer throughout the 20th century. And Drawbridge, the town already at sea level, started to sink. And first thing you know, you hear a lapping underneath the cabin, and then the next thing you know, you've got water coming into the cabin. So you're due to raise the cabin again. In 1963, there were fewer than five residents. By that point, newspapers were writing about Drawbridge as if it was a ghost town already. They also said there was all kinds of antiques and stuff here, which they were, but people still owned them. This led to looting, vandalism, and arson. The remaining residents left, except one, Charlie. Why I stayed out there and put up with this junk. I don't know why I put up with it. I just liked the environment down there. And I, but the only thing is I can't tell you what I liked about it. Charlie finally left in 1979, and by that time, Drawbridge had become part of a wildlife preserve. Today, it's protected land, illegal to step foot on. So now, the only way to see those old shacks is from passing trains, which leaves Drawbridge 
just for the birds. For Bay Curious, this is Jessica Plachek. 